Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and in this video I'm going to go over basically autofocus settings for recording video, especially if you're doing something like I'm doing, like these talking headshots. There's a bunch of different features in the, in the camera, and in my case I'm using the Sony a6400, and I just wanted to go over those settings. For example, you might be using an external monitor like I'm using, and when recording in 4K, the facial recognition priority doesn't work. So if I hold something up in front of the camera like this, it's not going to prioritize my face. See that? Even though my face is in the scene, it's not prioritizing it. It's kind of weird, but these little weird quirky things is what I'm going to go over in this video. So stay tuned if you're interested in learning more about autofocus when recording video and just best practices, things to look out for. guys so just to be clear I have a micro HDMI cable plugged into the camera it goes up to the monitor so I can actually see what I'm doing I'm in movie mode on the camera using my Sigma 30 millimeter f1.4 lens I also have a variable ND filter on the front to slow my shutter speed down because I am recording in 4k at 24p so I want my shutter speed to be at 1 50th of a second so you can see here 4k and then the actual record setting is 24. So you want to double that for video, which is why I want the shutter speed at 1 50th, but I also want the aperture at f1.4. So in order to do that, I need an ND filter on the front of the lens, and that's how you dial it in. As far as picture profiles go, I'm using currently HLG2, which was under PP10, and that's basically hybrid log gamma, and it just gives you a more of like a raw look when you go into the editing process. Now as far as focus area, I'm using wide mode. White balance, I have the white balance custom set and it works out to 3400 degrees. I used a white balance chart and just did that quick, set it up, very easy. If you need a tutorial on that, let me know. And basically at that point, the camera is pretty much set up. I have it in manual exposure mode, in video mode, as you can see here in ISO 100, so that's locked best quality possible. So then I just simply adjust my ND filter to make sure that the exposure is correct for my scene. So check this out, when I move the remote out of the way, it's gonna reacquire my face, but you see how long it takes? You can actually change that in the menu. It's called like focus responsiveness. See, it takes like a second or two. And then same thing with the remote, takes like a second or two. And then there's also the speed at which the autofocus changes once it acquires a new target. So it's, it can be slower, fast, basically. So if you look, it's smoothly transitioning to my face. You can make it so it goes faster. Now, why would you want that? Well, if you're tracking moving subjects during video, you're gonna want a faster response rate. So you're gonna want it to switch tracking positions as quickly as possible. You don't want this slow transition when you're tracking a moving subject during video. So AF drive speed, now I have the AF drive speed set to fast. So let me show you the difference. It's gonna acquire the target, but watch how quick the focus transitions. It's still taking a second to find the target, but when it actually does switch focus, like watch, see how fast the focus is switching to my face? It's still taking a second to acquire, but the actual AF speed is much quicker. See that? So let, now let me put it on slow. What it was on originally was normal. So now I'm gonna put it on slow and show you the difference. Okay, so now I have the AF drive speed set to slow and watch how slow it is when it focuses on the mitt. You see that? It's super slow now. Now watch when it goes back to my face. It's a very slow focus transition as you can see. So that's what slow is. So you can change that. You got slow, medium, and fast. 
And again, if you're recording fast moving subjects, you're going to want it on fast. But for doing what I'm doing, I find normal works pretty good. So I don't mind, you know, it does take a little bit of time to transition from me to like if I'm holding something up in front of the camera when it's set to normal. But slow is definitely too slow. But it's definitely a cool feature in case you want a slow transition depending on what you're doing. You might not be aware that that feature is on the camera and it's a very powerful feature. So just keep that in mind. Now let me show you what focus responsiveness does. That's basically going to be the time it takes for when it switches focus from one object to another. So you got the AF drive speed, which is the actual AF itself. When it is switching focus, it'll be either quick or slow, but then how long it takes to acquire a new subject is the actual responsiveness. So I have it set to standard right now. Let me switch it to responsive, and I will also put the AF drive speed back to normal. <laughs> So I have the focus responsiveness set to responsive as opposed to standard. So watch what happens now when I raise this up. You see how quickly it changes? It instantly switches focus between me and the subject. Like there's no time delay. You saw before there was like a second or so delay and now there's literally nothing. It just switches between whatever I'm holding up and whatever I'm not holding up. Now notice with my face in the scene, it is still focusing on the mitt and that is because when I have, I have an external HDMI cable hooked up to the camera, the A6400, it's going to a monitor. When you have it set up that way, it does not use face priority. So normally if a face is in the scene like it is here, it would prioritize my face and it would only be focusing on my face even though the mitt is closer to the camera. So right now, because I'm using that external cable and monitor, it won't allow for that feature. So I'm gonna unplug the cable from the camera and I'll show you the difference, watch. All right, I just unplugged the cable. So now I could see on the camera monitor, it's obviously much smaller, so it's harder for me to see, which is why I want to use the external monitor. But now that the cable is unplugged, the, the square box for the facial recognition is up. So if I hold this out in front of the camera, notice how it's not going to focus on it because it's prioritizing my face. Now you can turn this feature on and off in the camera, which is great because sometimes you might want it to focus on something close and you don't want to have to cover your face like in order to get it to focus on this I got to cover my face and then if I pull this away it's gonna see my face again and automatically come back so if you're holding products in front of the camera up close but you don't necessarily want to cover your face you might want to turn off the facial priority when it comes to autofocusing in video. And like I said, when I have it hooked up to an external monitor, it automatically does that. It doesn't allow you to have facial priority when using an external monitor, which is kind of a weird thing, but in 4K, that's how it works. If you're recording in 1080, P at 24 frames per second, for example, it will work when hooked up to an external monitor. You know, so it's just in 4K, it doesn't for whatever reason. And uh, it's just the way it is on the Sony a6400. The Sony a6600, I believe may work in 4K on a monitor. I honestly did not test that when I had the camera, but I'm pretty sure it does. But that's the latest and greatest camera and it must just take more processing power. I'm guessing when, you know, outputting to the to an external monitor while recording in 4K. So it's just one of those things you may have ran into this problem and been like, what the heck? So that's just how it is. So honestly, after doing this testing, I think I'm going to switch it to responsive because I do like to hold things up in front of the camera often when I'm doing my reviews and I want it to be snappy. I don't want to hold it there and then pause for a second. I want it to like quickly, you know, switch between my face and whatever I'm holding up, whether I'm you know, reviewing a lens or whatever. So I think I'm going to have mine set to responsive from now on. I, I did have it set to standard, um, but that little bit of a delay is kind of annoying and I noticed it when editing videos and stuff. I'm like, man, that half a second delay kind of sucks. So responsive is a good way to go. Now, as far as IAF during video, that only works on the latest and greatest cameras like the Sony a6600 and the Sony a92, for example, that has IAF while recording video. So the a64 doesn't have that, but the facial recognition works so good that it doesn't really matter, you know, for the most part. As long as you have facial recognition turned on, as long as you have that on, the camera will still track the face really well. 
and IAF really isn't that big of a deal when it comes to video in my opinion. I haven't had like a bad result like where my eyes are blurry and my face is sharp. Like it seems to know what to focus on. So just because the A6400 for example doesn't have that, it doesn't mean it's not gonna do a fantastic job on recording video. All right, so the next thing I wanna show you is object tracking, so, or subject tracking. You could basically just tap the screen and it will, you know, track an object and it'll just, no matter where it is on the screen, it'll track, you'll see there's like a, a box that tracks the object around and then you can cancel it at any time. So I wanna show you that quick and I'm just gonna switch the camera up and use the lab scene for that test. So yeah, in the menu here, you just gotta go to function of touch operation and then you switch it over to touch tracking. It's really that simple. And then once you do that, all you have to do is touch somewhere on the screen, like on the quarter, for example, and that little tracking box comes up. And you can see how it's just tracking the quarter as I move the camera. Now, of course, the quarter could also be moving back and forth. That could be somebody's face. It could be a bike riding, you know, whatever you want to track, a dog, it, it'll all work. And notice on the top of the screen, there's that little tracking symbol with an X. Um, you hit that to cancel the tracking operation. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, it's really not that complicated, but it's not set up this way by default. So that's why I wanted to make bring it to your attention and, and point it out. Like notice here, I'm just moving the door and you can see how it's still tracking the subject as I do that. So it'll do this while recording video as well. I'm, I'm in standby mode right now, but it behaves exactly the same in video and the tracking symbol will be there when you're recording as well. It'll be up on the screen. So I know during video, a lot of times you don't, you don't have any indication of what the camera is focusing on because the autofocus points don't come up when recording video, but in tracking, it does come up um, even when recording, as you can see here. All right, guys, so just to wrap things up here, I really hope you got something out of this video. And I really just wanted to show you some of the more advanced settings that are offered by the Sony cameras when it comes to AF speed, like drive speed when recording video, and AF responsiveness when recording video, and also facial priority when recording video, because depending on what you're recording, whether it's high speed moving subjects, or you're doing like talking head videos like I'm doing right now, you may wanna have those settings configured completely different. And also, when recording video, you might wanna have a really slow transition of the autofocus, or you might wanna have it really fast just for dramatic effect and you may not be aware that those features are even available on the camera. So that was really the point of this video, and I really hope you got something out of it. So if you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, and you know, be sure to subscribe if you're not already with the notification bell, and you will get notified every time I come out with a new video. So that is pretty much it. I hope you guys have a great day, and I will catch up with you next time. Take care.